Here at Pac-12 Media Day with Tad Boyle. Tad, uh, what, what is this day like for you? Uh, obviously a lot of questions. Uh, I'm sure you're wanting to get at this point of the preseason just wanting to play some basketball. Yeah, absolutely. I think we feel like our players do. You know, it's like it's been a long day and our guys have been in practice now for two weeks. They're ready to play against somebody different. But, you know, this day brings a lot, a lot of excitement. Obviously, you look around the league and you got great respect for the coaches and the players in this league. And uh, but uh, Pac-12 does a great job hosting this event, and uh, a lot of media from throughout the, throughout the country are here, and it's a great kickoff to uh, what I think is going to be another great year of Pac-12 basketball. Does this year's team remind you of any teams you've had before, or is this kind of a unique group that you have? Well, they're all unique in their own way, but if I had to pick one team at Colorado that this team reminds me of, it's probably our first year. Uh, you know, we had Austin Default, uh, six foot eight, playing the five. Uh, Marcus Relford. We had you know four, basically guards playing and playing with Austin, and uh, a lot of versatility. Very offensive minded. Uh, I never could get that team to guard very well, and hopefully I've had better success with this team and uh, on that side of the ball. But I think we're very talented, deep, and uh, got a lot of weapons. You said it already that the Pac-12 preseason media poll doesn't mean anything. Yep. That said, would you rather be picked to finish lower than those expectations that come if you were to be picked first or second? It really doesn't matter. I mean, it doesn't matter if you're picked first or 12th or anywhere in between. I mean, it's just... Uh, be honest with you, until somebody told me we were picked fifth, I didn't know, and I certainly don't care. Do you feel with Derek White you almost have kind of this secret that maybe a lot of people outside of the state of Colorado don't know about? Yes. And uh, <laughs> I would imagine that secret's going to get out, though, pretty soon. I think it will. Yeah, it's just, uh, we'll let nature take its course, but Derek's a special player, and, and we got a lot of special players, but uh, he can affect the game in a lot of different ways. And, uh, I'm excited to see... Uh, what he does when the thing gets tipped up on November the 11th. We obviously get a chance to see him in practice. A lot of Colorado fans do, don't know, quite know what he is yet. Could you kind of explain a little, go, expand a little bit more on what type of player he is? Yeah, and I don't like, again, I, I'm not a hype guy, so I don't like to hype guys up. But Derek, is, I, I say he's a multifaceted player who can affect the game in a lot of different ways. He can score it from three. He can put the ball on the floor. He's got a great mid-range game. He can get to the rim. He's athletic. He's a great passer. Uh, so he can make plays for his teammates just like he can make plays for himself. You know, he's a, a sneaky shot blocker for a guy that's six foot five, and he's just he just knows the game. He's a guy that when he has the ball or you're running a play, you feel really comfortable as a coach when the ball's in his hands or when he's on the court because he doesn't make a lot of bad decisions. He's not perfect, but he doesn't make a lot of bad decisions. You brought Wesley Gordon out here. Is this kind of getting outside of his comfort zone a little bit? Is that maybe good for him? A little bit, yeah, absolutely. And, and Wesley's been in the program for five years. He's... You know, uh, I think with Josh leaving, you know, it's Wesley's time to really step up. But, uh, you know, we mentioned Derek White was sitting out last year. We also had Xavier Johnson, another fifth-year senior, who was sitting out as well due to an injury. Um, so we've got two guys that are going to help replace Josh in that production. But Wesley certainly, uh, interior-wise, is going to be called upon to be our rock. Yeah, I mean, when you if you're listing the keys to this basketball season for your team, is Wesley Gordon being consistent at the top of the list? If it's not at the top, it's pretty near it. I mean, and uh, now the the thing about Wesley, we know what he can do. You know, he's a great shot blocker. He's a uh, a very good team defender. We need him to be a little bit more aggressive offensively because I think he's capable of uh, scoring the ball for us. And uh, but consistency with our whole team is going to be the issue. If, if if I had to pick one word, you know, that we need to be to be successful this year is consistent because we've got the talent, we've got the pieces. Now we got to be consistent with, with the way we play the game. In terms of replacing Josh Scott, obviously leadership was a big thing he brought to the locker room. Any, anybody stepping up in that role yet? Uh, you know, I think Xavier Johnson is the guy who's probably the most vocal on our team, and uh, I think he's done a good job with that, letting his voice be heard. But you don't know about leadership with a team or with a player or a group of players until you hit adversity. So um, I'm hoping that when we do hit adversity, you know, whatever that may be, that we've got guys like Xavier Johnson, Wesley Gordon, Derek White, Josh Fortune, who are in their fifth year of college, understand that, recognize it, and you know, turn the ship in the right direction, and really message to the team what the coaching staff is messaging and, and be on the same page. And if we have that, 
we're going to have a great year because we've got uh, we've got some good players. I don't think he's going to be mistaken for Ray Allen, but Dallas Walton as a seven footer can actually <laughs> stroke the ball. What would have been your impressions of those freshmen so far? Well, Dallas and Lucas Seward are two guys who have size. Dallas is seven foot, Lucas is six ten. They can stretch the defense. You have to guard them behind the three point line. And our team, our players, uh, veteran guys that are having to guard these guys. I think have been taken aback a little bit about how well they shoot the ball, and if you do leave them open, they're going to knock it down. It's a great weapon as we look to the future of Colorado basketball, having some pick and pop guys, uh, legitimate pick and pop guys, you know, on that front line. And uh, Lucas and Dallas are there in the backcourt. You know, Bryce Peters and Delion Brown have both done some very, very nice things in practice. Delion is a little quiet, kind of a silent assassin type guy, left-handed, does, as you watch film on practice, does a lot of things to help your team win. And Bryce is a guy that can just go get a bucket. He's a kind of an old-fashioned baller, uh, so to speak, and he can, uh, he can score points in a hurry. Very talented on the offensive and the defensive end. What was more challenging for you, establishing the culture when you first got to see you, or kind of maintaining that consistency within the program? Well, you know, uh, and I don't know the, the statistics, but I know, you know, prior to us getting there, you know, we know that they hadn't had much success getting to the NCAA tournament or postseason play on a consistent basis. Uh, hadn't had a winning season in quite some time. So uh, it was really taking what Jeff Bizdelic has had done in the three years he'd been there, which is, which is, you know, set a good foundation and groundwork with guys like Alec Burks and Corey Higgins and Levi Knutson and Marcus Relford, that whole team, Austin Default, Nate Tomlinson, and, and, and building it from there in terms of the culture of how important it is to defend, how important it is to rebound, and what it takes to win on a consistent basis. And, and uh, we've had some, those players did a good job of it, and as well as some of the guys that we brought in to add to the mix. And uh, So it's kind of taking the foundation and trying to build upon it from there. And just lastly, the last six plus years, you've had opportunities to go other places. What What is it about CU that, and do you still wake up in the morning and still have kind of that energy that you did maybe early on your, your tenure at CU? Absolutely. Uh, I mean, it's, it's, it's like I got the job yesterday, how I feel inside. Now, I know I look a little different. I've lost more hair and I, you know, what I got left is more gray, but... Uh, you know, I go to work every day at the University of Colorado, thankful that I have this job, uh, appreciative that I have this job, and yeah, I have had opportunities to leave, but uh, I'm a Colorado guy. I grew up in Colorado. I, I left one time, and I'm not going to leave again, at least not on my terms. All right. Thanks, Coach. Appreciate it. Thank you.